and girls of all ages over 18, of course, because that's how it goes on my channel. Of course, you might not be a boy or a girl too. You might be an attack helicopter. Who am I to say you're not? Um, today, my very special guest is Andreas, who I came across because he sent me an email suggesting that I'd had some effect in of, over his life in some way by virtue of saying some of the crazy stuff I've been saying online over the last few years, and, and that was very gratifying to hear. So I appreciate that. And then he suggested that he maybe played guitar a little bit, and I went, oh, yeah, here's another guy that plays some guitar. and you know. So I, I clicked on this video. amazing guitar player so all hail all hail uh, we are not worthy and all that kind of stuff um but anyway let's hear from you about your story about the carnivore diet what was going on for you beforehand with your health um what was your experience of nutrition up to that point how did you discover carnivore what's changed really it's just an opportunity for you to tell us your whole story and i can stop talking no thanks um well yeah you had a huge part you know a couple years ago uh, you know, I did the, I was the Atkins. I mean, I did the early, I was the early Atkins guy when everyone's like, oh, you're crazy. You're going to have a heart attack when, mm. when the Atkins bar and all that stuff. And so, you know, that whole low carb thing that worked for me, but then I'd always gain it back. It was a disaster. And then I, I just started the carnivore. I don't know where it was a 30 day challenge. I don't know. I, you know, I found you and I found everybody, all the crazies mm. too, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's the classics, right. Which you've gone up against all of them, which, which is why honestly, it meant so much to me because every time I would get, I would have a diversion because there's conditioning. I'm American. We're most propagandized people on the planet to the point where we poison ourselves on purpose because we don't even know what to eat properly. And whatever, you know, it's my own choice to feed my face and, and get obese as a young child. But I've been heavy since I was a teenager, 11, 12 years old. I don't know what triggered it depression i don't know but i'm you know greek american it's a mentality you, you're not dep everyone's depressed suck it up you know and mm. so i never really got to help for it i just cope with it and then i became a drinker and a very efficient drinker because i could uh, function it's the worst kind is when you can function at least if i would screw up my life i would get off of it and be like yeah, i can't do that anymore but i could function literally up until very recently um and Finally, when I started to do the autophagy with the fasting, and I've heard you fast, and I've heard you talk about fasting, um, pretty much my main three, you know, you, Fung, and and Ken Berry, you know, the, the, my triforce of sanity that kept me from going insane every time. Because, you know, everybody out there, when you see you're doing carnivore, they're like, oh, it's immediately, you're crazy, you're weird, 
oh, that's the right wing diet or whatever the insanity people come up with. It's ridiculous how much they're propagandized to the point where they're going to convince you it's bad for you. So crazy, right? Mm -hmm. So there's deconditioning that I've been doing, I'm still doing, because it just happened this year, starting in, in about January, February. I started to get desperate because I was not getting any, uh, I was not getting drunk anymore. I was essentially, in, with carnivore, I for two two years doing it, I was losing weight and the body recomposition was happening. So I was feeling good and feeling stable mentally enough to just be kind of a better functioning drunk, I guess. Um, and less like I want to not be alive. Like I was, I, I had the build, the carnivore diet the lifestyle gave me the building blocks to function better so that maybe I can improve, but still declining emotionally, mentally in every way. This, and, and finally when I started doing the autophagy and it was a lot of, you know, catching a live stream where you would just be casually talking about how you just finished, you're finishing up a 72 hour fast and constantly how, and by example, I'm thinking, well, come on, you make it sound so easy that it's like, and the, the carnivore is working, it's working, I'm functioning, but I'm still heavy. You can see even those videos I sent you, that was like, cause I, I never really took pictures of how I look cause I was very embarrassed of how I look. So when I'm like, well, you can see, and, and this happened so fast since about March, I did the 24 hour fasting like every, you know, three times a week. And then I did the 36 and then I started, it started just going nuts. And then I started to lose, lose weight, like unbelievably fast. Also simultaneously, I should tell you, I started to use cannabis as a means to relax instead of alcohol. And so, um, and I would be, I would use strains that were great for appetite suppression as well as make me very animated and excited. So I would literally drink coffee and smoke weed and started a, a side hobby of um, dry stacking stone, stone masonry. And this is like a fun way to kind of get the muscles going and build uh, ponds and retention ponds. And um, anyway, whatever ridiculous thing, I was desperate at this point. And so I honestly have, I'm size small and it, I was a large, extra large in January. And, um, it's still crazy. I don't really, you know, I, it's still to the point where I'm, I'm like, I, I'm trying to pack on weight a little bit because I, I feel like my metabolism uh, was totally screwed. I mean, I've been heavy. I would yo-yo and the statins, I got threatened with the statins from my mm -hmm. doctor. And I told him I was doing the carnivore. I mean, I'm desperate. I am even said, hey, you know, I was thinking of using the, the marijuana. Like maybe you can recommend you recommend, you know, give me a medical card. I don't know. Like I'm I'm lost here, man. I'm killing myself with booze mm. and and I'm carnivore. So I'm better, but I'm still a disaster. And the carnivore community helps. You know, you, you, you can find those carnivores that manage to drink and still get by. And it's great. And, and it is amazing how much it balances you. And I think when I was listening to a podcast one time and, and a lady a psychiatrist was saying how um, the, the, the way that we're feeding ourselves is what's making our brain sick and, and there's nothing wrong with half the people. And, I, and I'm like, because there's nothing wrong with me, nothing, you know, um, and nothing clinical. So I have nothing to complain about, um, but except the fact that, you know, I've somehow been convinced to kill myself with this stupid diet for so long. And this is where like the deconditioning comes in where it's like, I'm still deconditioning. My relationship with food is distorted. It's mutated to the, it's sick. Just like essentially a lot of people, um, you know, my hormones were, who knows what was wrong with me, but I feel like basically all this weight and stress has been lifted off of me and I'm still adjusting to it. Like I'm, I'm just not bumping into things is like, what is that all about? I mean, my size has shrunk to the point where I'm like, I'm, I'm enjoying, I'm, I'm flabby. You know, I got flab everywhere. I'm not really like, I don't want to get bulky. I don't want to do that yet. I want to enjoy being smaller. And the music thing, because the ultimate depression, these two years when I kind of even year when I stopped making videos, it was dysfunctional. I was like, I was not motivated to be musical. And then finally it came the music when the music started coming back, the motivation to be creative. And then suddenly I started to notice like my cognition, like the way I would build muscle memory was a lot easier. So like these 
first couple tunes when I think I wrote you when I finished the first one, I just did like three songs that have generally always been really hard for me to do. I picked this this Aphex Twin song, which is an electronic kind of thing, um, and I, the Star Trek theme, which is brutal. And then uh, whatever, at that point, I was trying to test my cognition because I also started to notice like my memory, everything is improving. Like I'm taking a super pill. And this is the autophagy is so insane. The thing that I can't even get past and and like is the addiction part. I became unaddicted to alcohol to the point where, I mean, weed is a different creature. When you smoke weed and you're stressed out, it makes you more stressed. You, you can't escape it. It'll make your anxiety through the roof if you're mm -hmm. nervous about something. It makes you face your thing. Booze helps you be like, yeah, see, you got nothing to worry about. Yeah, have another drink. It's so destructive, but um, the, just the relaxation component helped knock that out. And then I was out. And then I, at some point, probably because I was stoned, I misplaced my electric cigarette. And so I could not find <laughs> my nicotine source. And all of a sudden I'm like, but the autophagy, I suddenly had no problem. I didn't have to run out and get some sort of quick cartridge that just get the thing. And I'm an avid nail biter, avid smoker since I, I mean, pack a day, Lucky Strikes Unfiltered was my start. Vaping, I did that when that just kind of started. But long story short, I got it down to nicotine and just vaping, but still bad. It's nicotine, mm. which was not great for all my crazy problems emotionally or whatever, too. Um, the caffeine, I know, still gives me anxiety, but I play with it and enjoy it because I just love it so much. Um, and I think I like the polyphenols are not like I know what I'm talking about polyphenols and the uh, the terpenes. There's an exciting effect happening with fasting. I don't know. But either way, when I'm doing the dry stacking stone masonry, it gets me going. But be after about 20 minutes of that, I'm completely sober. I've sweated out all the all the THC. And now I'm running on endorphins. And so that's what it was kind of the effect it was having. So I don't know if I was sweating out every single ounce of addiction to nicotine but that for me this is in this year i've been a nicotine smoker for 30 i since i was 21 i'm 46 now and that's another thing the gray hair and i heard that one interview you do you do with that lady who was you were like yeah what about the sunburn thing and then suddenly like i'm doing these dry stacking ponds i'll send you pictures of my ponds because i have a before when i was an alcoholic and then i made this for my mother and i saw it i'm like and i started to sober up i'm like so ugly. What was I thinking that that was good? It's the lay lines are off. It's not even leveled. And it just started to uh, dawn on me like, my God, all the bad decisions from boozing it up. And so the autophagy is where the magic really kind of kicked in. And the bonus thing is like the addictions. I've re-addicted myself to caffeine, but it's not, I don't really have a problem and with alcohol, if I, you know, I have a lot of fish tanks, so sometimes I siphon and I get water, immediately want to spit it out because it'll kill me. So I have to take a shot of vodka to kill whatever's in my mouth. And when I do that, then it's suddenly no problems. And I don't really am grossed out by alcohol. So I don't really have a, there's no, like I need withdraw, I have withdrawal or I need a step program. I, I literally, it's gone, which is weird. I didn't know autophagy did, did that, you know, um, We've we've seen time and again with people when they change their diet to an appropriate species specific diet. I myself I can I can relate exactly to the alcohol issue. I've dealt with an alcohol issue through carnival ostensibly and through the disciplines involved in that. I do have a long history with THC use and abuse as well. Um I've never been hugely overweight though, so that's that's the thing that's of real interest to me as well. Tell us how much you have actually lost weight wise. Um, my I stopped counting when I did the the blood test. I'm like, okay, I officially have to find out what's going on. I was about sixty pounds dropped at that point, and then I kept going and going, and I was down to a medium, and then the medium was loose, and then the, I'm down to a small. I'm trying to pack on a little bit because I, not like I'm losing muscle, but I, I don't want to get too thin to the point where I'm like, okay, nothing's fitting me right anymore, you know, but it's nice to have that control. I mean, so I'm, I'm doing the kind of, I don't know what you call it in the, 
in the carnivore process where you reintroduce things back into what you got. But I've never had problems with certain things. I could say I'm probably lactose sensitive. Mm. I get a little bloated when I do that. Mm. But I don't really have problems with anything. I don't have allergies to anything. Um, I just don't. The carbs make me fat, period. And so I stay away from sugar. And I got an addiction to to sugar. You know, I mean, I, I'm a monk fruit nut. Um, you know, it's uh, – yeah – so, I mean, I got things I'm working through, but at least it's manageable now. Like Carnivore gave me the first two years ago and helped me just manage my disaster, functioning disaster at a time, you know, I was manageable. And that was enough right there. And that's when I, you know, I saw you play guitar. I'm like, maybe someday I'll actually be able to tell that guy he, he helped me. But that was struggle after struggle, you know, and it's. You know, you know how disappointing it can be when nothing it doesn't go and, and you stall. And you know, I've, the stalling mm. in the Atkins world, it's like, oh, you just gain it back, you know, and you get disappointed. But the carnivory just baseline, psh, sane. So yeah. then you can maybe improve beyond barely functioning. Yeah, absolutely. So. In terms of your playing, in terms of your career as a musician, are you playing professionally? Are you gigging? What's happening? How is well, how is that leveled out? Since since the pandemic uh, kind of grounded me, I when the pandemic hit, I currently had a tour to Switzerland. I was doing about a two tours in Europe a year, and then uh, touring the states, and that was going on for about a solid five years solo. And so I was doing it all myself and going very well. Then that pandemic hit, grounded me. Simultaneously, my mom was starting to decline at that point. Uh, my father had passed, she was by herself, but she officially had fallen, broken a, a bone, broken a leg. So mm -hmm. it, uh, I was home. So it, I'm like, okay, let me take care of things and, and help you out. And then it, it turned out, you know, post fall, the dementia party starts, you know, with older people. Yeah. So um, that that as well grounded me. So I was just doing teaching and then I and then things opened it back up. I did a little touring again. Then things kind of closed up again. And so I'm currently in that position where I'm teaching, um, but touring is not going to happen. So right now I'm just getting back to a at least online presence, getting my Patreon started, all that stuff just so I can be less reliant on the touring. But that was my, that's my love is being in front of people, touring and playing and meeting people. I love that the most. That's just, I just love, I love it. And um, it gave me a chance to see the world. So I miss that the most. So, and right now it's like, there's nothing really, it's not, it's not ideal as a musician, as an audience to go anywhere, to do anything with mm -hmm. everything reason now i mean it wasn't ideal as soon as sorry i used the c word i'm not sure if we're supposed to do that but whatever the pandemic hit and then you know whatever it does it totally obliterated the gig economy yeah and so even if i have places to perform it's i'm not i've never really been i've always been a small niche guy you know i play instrumental solo acoustic guitar what the hell do you do with that so it's been its own thing and i've been fine with that but what little niches are to perform all over the world with those things those are hard to find as well now mm -hmm. because a lot of places have been closed a lot of people are you know in a position to do stuff to have uh, concerts the old salon style was a lot of what i would do is i'd perform private concerts not private but just like people you know when i go to switzerland there'd just be a concert with the neighborhood and they would come to someone's house and bring potluck and it was beautiful and you'd get to be close to people and talk to people and it's it's the most beautiful way in my mind to to perform, and it's the old school way that all musicians used to do it, you know? Mm -hmm. So I've never been an online person. I always like the relationship of one-to-one -one performing, touring, and stuff like that. So the current situation has got me to the point where I absolutely have to be totally online at this point. So that's kind of, that's where I'm at now. But now at least I have motivation to push my playing to another level, and that kind of stalled for a while because I was, because it's just the crippling of, of, uh, just, you know, it's amazing how even, even when you have most things right, without that autophagy, without cracking through that 
I don't know. I just, I really had no idea it was capable of that. If I really did, because your casualness of talking about it, and you know, I have to say, what really helped me was your humor, because you're so musical the way you swear at people. I loved it so much that, and it would also, it was cathartic, because, you know, I think most of your audience are, they love your science and your brain, but your humor it's so cathartic to be like, that's, that's, I'm so pissed. Everyone's so pissed that we've been lied to and poisoned, poisoning ourselves. That's the worst part of it. Like no mm. one shoved this food in my face. I didn't know what to do. I was doing Jenny Craig in the 80s, 90s. I didn't know, you know? Mm. Yeah. It's like it's very interesting that you mentioned the way I conduct myself in terms of the, the way I present on the YouTube, et cetera. Um, ergo the, the comedy and the swearing and all of that kind of stuff. And it, it seems to be that it's a good way of educating people by subterfuge, getting the information through to them before they realise that they've suddenly been taught something scientific. Um, because when I look at my other main sort of channel where I'm all collar and tie and no swearing and no, co no comedy to speak of, the information's the same. It's the same science. It's the same person. But it gets like one-tenth the subs. So obviously it's something that works and something I can't change at this time. I, you know, it, there are people that, that, that comment every week saying, you shouldn't behave like that. It's, uh, and I'm like, well, show me another way. Who are these people? Well, I don't know. They're uptight people, clearly. Um, You're an artist. You're an artist and you need to speak. Yes, thank you. There we go. Appreciate it. Yeah, I just I just wish I had the um, the musical ability that I wish I had. You know, it's um, I, I was I was a struggling a struggling gig player, um, playing guitar and singing a bit in bands throughout my twenties, and yeah, it was like that was never going to make me a living. No, what shall I do? I'll go and study science. Oh, this is a bit dry. Um, how do I make this fun for people? So when I started out as a, as a young lecturer 20-something years ago, when I'd finished my studies and I was going to be passing on to the next generation, it was like, well, what? Uh, you know, how do I do this differently? So I did the humour thing without swearing, obviously, because as a lecturer you can't so much do that. And it seemed to work really well. People seemed to click on and get it and get good grades and whatever. So it's really just, a, um, as you say, the, the, the YouTube thing gives you an opportunity to express yourself. And, you know, this is a way that I could say, right, not only am I going to use the humour, I'm going to go to the nth degree. And and um, so that's where that came from, purely out of interest for those that want to know what, why do I do that? Well, I do it because oh. it works. Well, and you're very good at it. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yeah. It's it's so therapeutic because, you know, like, you know how so, sometimes the, the carnivore community can be very, they're very, very strict, just like anybody, you know, it's, and I, but the only reason I can always excuse it, like, cause sometimes I'd ask a question in the community and I get a response, like, of course you can't eat egg whites. What's the matter with you? It's fit mm. for dogs, you know? And it's, I love it. At the same time, it's like, no, they're pissed. Everyone's pissed because they've been lied to. And I I don't have much to complain about because I didn't have a ton of problems except for I was killing myself slowly. Just I could not get anything right with my body. Mm. I don't know if what I had wrong with me, metabolic syndrome, my hormones were crazy. I, I So bizarre for my whole life. I can show you probably pictures since I was 11 years old. Um very obese, essentially. So this is the first time in my life I'm actually kind of thin. I did have a brief period, maybe like 21 to 24 or something, but I've always been heavy. And um, so it, it really just, you know, I think, I think the, the science is, it's there. It's just, you know, it's so sad that we have to dig. So we have to like sift through so much crap and so many liars and so much, I mean, misleading. It's still so disgusting how people, about every subject. I mean, the, the whole, you know, the big propaganda word is crazy, but it's like, come on. When it, Even when it comes down to like the, the whole, the thing they just found out about serotonin levels with, you know, 
that suddenly now the, there's no such medication that really levels that out. That's not really, I mean, I don't know if that's true, but that's mm. what they're finding, right? Yeah. So suddenly that, that's a lie now too. And so, okay, so everything's basically, you know, halitosis, right? Isn't that the first one when they told you there's a disease for bad breath? Mm. And guess what? You got it. Yeah. So here you go. We made something for you. There's no such problem. It's called you're eating crappy food and you you got horrible breath, right? Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. But it's like you tell people, no, this is a problem. You got to buy this product to solve the problem. It's the original sun tanning lotion. Like, I forget. I think it was you. I, I believe it was it was the woman you had on. You were talking about that. And then when I was building this pond, I'm like, I've been in the sun for six hours straight and I have I have a nice tan. And then I went camping with a buddy of mine. And then I finally am like, this makes sense now. I have not been able to burn. And I'm Greek American. And of course, I don't burn that easy. But eight hours in the sun. And I was camping with a buddy of mine who's Guatemalan American. So it's like he was burning. Mm. We're both burn friendly people, right? Mm. Skin wise. Mm. And I, I had no problems. Just a nice, beautiful tan. It was uh, crazy. And so that's another weird bonus that is so bizarre. Yeah. What's the science behind that? That's so weird. Well, the, the thinking is that it's likely to be around when you're consuming an amount of polyunsaturates that's unnatural, that those polyunsaturates actually displace the saturates in fat molecules that become structural components of cell membranes and other things in, in, in all sorts of cells in your body, including in the skin. And it's that that leaves us vulnerable to the damage to those tissues by those UV light of the sun that in the natural sense, if we're eating a naturally species appropriate, species specific diet, doesn't seem to happen. So that's the thinking around it. I, th I think we're yet to get to a level where we've got the hard science to say that's definitely what it is but it, it looks like a pretty good mechanism to me and it makes pretty good sense because at, so, at the end of the day humans have walked this planet in our current hairless form pretty much hairless anyway some of us for um at least three hundred and fifty thousand years and that big ball of gas in the sky that's been burning away and dousing the planet in uv radiation all that time hasn't changed hugely in that time it's the same thing Right. And we weren't running around slathering ourselves. You don't see paintings on, on the walls of, of cavemen where they're going, doo, 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 sunscreens and right. common news. Uh, that was just before they dive headlong at the mammoths with their mouths open with their sharp pointy teeth like this. Right. Yeah. Right. And also that's right beside the pictures on the cave walls of the people eating salads. <laughs> no. Yeah, so it seems like it's it's a modern problem, the sunburn issue, and you know it, it's it's I think it's got to be down to the consumption of seed oils, the unnatural consumption of seed oils, the unnatural avoidance of the saturates that you get with animal fat, and also it's not just about that; it's also about the ratio of saturates to un unsaturates in the animal fat. That's a natural um, ratio. A lot of things biologically are about ratios. You get the ratio out of whack, and it's not so much the the absolute amounts. Uh, omega three to omega six is an example of that. It's about getting as close to the right ratio as possible. Um, and the solution is to stop with the unnatural pouring in of the six. It's not to take extra three, for example. So yeah, there's that. Mm. All right. Well, an interesting conversation. Really good to get to know you a bit better. Really good to put another N equals one experience in the bag. Because we've just got anecdotes here. Just anecdotes, though, boys and girls. No actual evidence of anything. That's all we've got, anecdotes. But we've got so many, I think it's probably time that people sat up and took notice, frankly. Andreas is yet another example. Depressed, sounds like. Fat unhealthy, metabolically disturbed, addicted to various things, manic it sounds like. You name it. Let's go for yep. it. Pretty much sorted. You're functional. You're working. You've lost probably 80 pounds by the look of things from, from what I've seen in your old photos, at least. 
if not a bit more. Well, um, yeah. You're performing again, albeit on an online way rather than face to face. That's a needs must situation. Things are tracking the way they should be. Thanks, Doc. Not at all. Well, you help. You help. You know, I. It's. It's really. I, honestly, it's. Um, it can't be stated enough because. Not only are you educating your D, your D, uh, what's the word? Deconditioning. You yeah. know, like I, I really, it's really not very different from a cult. I mean, how you are convinced, you no, know, even to the point where I know this is right for me, but I still have a weird relationship with food I have to watch out with where I fast and I have, when I'm done fasting, I have to be careful how much I eat because sometimes I'm really hungry and it's this whole weird, it's okay. I'm aware of it. And I have the building, I have the tools now to attack it rationally. And so that's where it's, it's amazing. So it's like, not only are you, you educating, but you're deconditioning and, and it's the most powerful thing because you just going over when you roast these people, when you just do it, it's like, oh yeah, oh yeah. And then all these just straight up, even how important it always is in my head. I hear you very often in my head. Uh, you're so wonderful with your swear words, but I do hear, I do hear some nice things too. And it's the, the 70% carnivore is very important because you know, it's a rational, simple thing, but it just makes me okay because I don't have to be 90%. I can be 70%. I can, you know, if I don't have problems, I have a weight problem in general, but I don't have allergies, but I will watch it, you know. But either way, at least now I have what it takes to fight it, you know, that I've been deconditioned and I just wish I could decondition everybody else somehow, like, you, you know, to help. So, Thanks for having me. I, I hope that it helps anybody else. Awesome. Thank you very much for sharing. Thanks for your openness. We do appreciate it. It is valuable to hear people's stories. That's why I'm doing these series of videos with, with others who are just telling their stories, just telling it like it is. Thank you once again for your time. And to see us out, we'll watch another performance of Andreas oh. tearing up the guitar. <laughs> Thanks, boys and girls. Catch you next time. We're probably someone will be wrong on the interwebs or something like that. See you then. <laughs>